Hello and welcome to a new video from Hordu Scenics. My name is Victor and today I'm going to walk you through how to build this RPG or tabletop sanctuary. I find this piece to be quite versatile because you can use it as an encounter place or even a connection between different areas. I made it 5x5 five five tiles because I like my boards to have a center but following this tutorial you can make it as big as you need. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we start building, let's take a look at the components that we need. So we're going to use some foam. Here I have a 5x5 five five block. This is cut from pink foam, a 1 inch thickness. Then we're going to need 4 blocks of 1x2. Uh, I cut this beforehand uh, using a foam cutter. Then of course we're going to need some paint. We're going to need a medium gray. We're going to need some lighter gray. I'm using here a slate gray. Um, then we're going to need some sort of brown. I'm using burnt sienna here, but any brown will work. Then some green. Uh, leaf green is what I had. Uh, you're free to use any other green. Um, a white is useful. You don't have to use titanium white. And then, of course, we need some black. Uh, black is used for uh, base coating. And ideally, use a matte black. Um, then we need some glue because putting together all this foam, we'll need to glue them together. Um, we're going to need to do a few cuts, so some sort of cutting tool like a knife or a cutter really works well. A ruler to make all the straight lines uh, on the pavement. And um, then I'm using here some turf. Um, this is from Woodland Scenics. I'm using two types. One is coarse and one is fine. Um, technically you can use anything that looks like this. And I think there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to build your own. But I'm just using this one because I've been kind of enjoying it. Uh, finally, you're going to need some brushes to apply the paint. So with all this, let's get started and let's get this thing building. The first thing we'll do is the tiles. I'm doing here four lines, uh, one inch apart. I'm kind of cheating here because I know my ruler is actually one inch. So it makes it really easy to do these lines. But what we're looking for is four lines, horizontal and another four perpendicular to them to represent the tiles. Um, as long as you can get them kind of at one inch, it shouldn't matter. Don't worry if they're not equally spaced. Uh, just do your best. Then using the back of a paintbrush, kind of highlighting the edges of those uh, uh, tiles and then making sure that the spaces in between are kind of visible. I want the tiles to also be visible a bit on the side. So I'm kind of eyeballing here a horizontal line that will go around uh, the piece. I think looking back, I'm doing this voiceover after I've recorded the video. I think I would have done it a bit larger, maybe half the thickness of the of the foam. So something like half an inch. Um, I think I cut it a bit too small, but it's not too bad. Um, you're going to see a bit later. Um, it's not so much visible as I was expecting, but um, yeah, it should be, should be okay. For cutting corners, both literally and figuratively, I've made this little jig. It's made from three triangles put together with glue, and I'm just using them to cut kind of equal sized corners. Um, you don't have to do it. Uh, I just find it quicker to do this and I really wanted to do this video really fast But just cutting any sort of corner here with the knife Should be just fine um, The only recommendation I have is that when you cut foam don't try to cut it in one go unless you have a very very sharp knife I recommend doing a few smaller cuts and don't put too much pressure because you're just gonna break the foam This took a bit uh, because there are four pieces, but all you have to do is get all of them to look the same. And um, yeah, even if they're not equal, you're going to see later on, we're actually cutting parts of them. So don't worry too much. Uh, just don't put too much pressure when you cut. That's the only, only thing because you don't want to break foam. You want to cut it. Once the four parts are cut, it's time to do a bit of texturing. 
I made here a bowl of aluminum foil, just something that you can buy from the supermarket, you know, the one that you use in the kitchen. Make a bowl and then simply hit the foam to get some texture on it. I found this to create really nice stone looking um, patterns and you know if you rotate the ball around because you're not gonna make a perfectly shaped um, round thing uh, you actually get different patterns so as you as you tap just rotate it slowly and then you're gonna get a very nice diversity of shapes and uh, depths then we're going to texture a bit with some cracks and breaks in the tiles here I'm just randomly cutting parts scratching um, I don't have an idea how it's gonna look like so just kind of trying to get a bit of everything you know don't don't make it on all tiles because not all the tiles are broken but you know some of them are more damaged than others so try to have a mix of damaged and non-damaged also try to get in different corners and cuts and some cuts go across the tiles and some cuts go only on the sides um, it's really up to you experiment uh, I find this to be so satisfying and this is my favorite thing to do um, anything that has to do with texturing or weathering is absolutely fascinating I'm doing here the same thing but for the pillars um, notice that for some of them I'm just cutting pieces of them uh, on one of them I'm cutting a really really large part of it uh, just trying to make them look different make them look like you know they had different um, nature effects on them some got more damage some look better some look worse um, yeah just make the piece your own and experiment the next step is the easiest we just don't want to see any more pink so we're using black and we're going to cover the whole thing in black that's it I'm using here toothpicks because I'm trying to cover five sides of these pillars uh, and I'm trying not to get too dirty on my hands um, pretty easy to do it with toothpicks or something like that um, but if you're okay getting your hands dirty um, just hold it with your hand or do four sides and then finally do the tops or something uh, the goal here is simply to cover the pink nothing else there's no magic no 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 special ingredient here use black um, don't use too much water you don't want it to be runny because the pink will show through um, I'm using here black with very very little water and all I'm doing is just covering all the holes and then we're gonna do the same thing for um, the main piece uh, we're gonna cover five sides you can also cover the bottom but um, I don't necessarily care if someone sees the the underside that's pink so I just um, did five sides and left the bottom uh, visible All right, now that we're done here, it's time to make some stone. Uh, we're gonna take the darker gray that we have, and here I cut a corner from a kitchen sponge that I had in the kitchen. Um, then just tap with the sponge in the paint, and then tap on the black parts of the tiles that we created before. Uh, just make sure the black is dry. Uh, this is actually on the next day. I let the whole thing dry overnight. And then here, like I said, I wished I made those um, sides a bit thicker. They would be more visible and prominent. Um, now I'm just having a bit of trouble here putting the paint. And I don't think they're really standing out. So if you do it yourself, maybe try to cut the side stone as half of the foam. Um, it doesn't look too bad. It's just I don't think it was necessary at all at this point small size um, <clears throat> here for the pillars we're doing the same thing as we did for the tiles tap into dark gray and then just tap all over uh, don't put too much paint 
you want some of the black to be visible uh, and we're trying to you know cover randomly as much as possible to get a lot of variety and to not make all the pillars look the same by the way just random thing i was thinking while doing this given how many possibilities are to get this paint on i don't think these pillars have ever been created before or will ever be created ever again so they're totally unique and whatever you create will be unique as well once the dark gray dried we're gonna take the lighter gray and do the same thing it's just we're gonna tap less the goal is to get less paint so black covers everything dark gray covers a bit less than the black and then with the light gray you want to cover even less so every layer that you add covers less and less you want the bottom layers to be visible uh, once you put the top layers i'm doing the same thing here as i did for the dark gray i'm doing it on the pillars and on the um, on the tiles if there's any cuts or holes where you couldn't get with a sponge uh, you can always use a uh, a brush and that should help you get in those spaces again don't put too much paint in there just a bit to to have them of a different color it's time to glue things up I'm just applying Mod Podge and putting the pillars on the board um, I th I've done either a mistake or I didn't wait enough you're gonna see later on that the pillars actually didn't stick uh, I'm not sure if I just didn't leave it enough didn't give it enough time or I should have done the gluing before applying the paint um, maybe the acrylic paint prevents Mod Podge from actually sticking um, but you'll notice that one of the pillars actually comes off and the others are a bit loose so not great if you can do the um, gluing before applying the paint I think would be much better one more paint step after everything dried I'm going to do some dry brushing with white so um, put a brush in paint get some paint on it then get all the paint off or almost all the paint off then just run it over edges and things that you want to highlight notice here uh, I'm running it over edges not all of them but those that I want to be a bit highlighted uh, it creates a very nice effect and something that you actually see in nature so it makes them look really realistic and I think really good don't do it too much you can overdo it but just um, try and see what you like all right this is another one of my favorite steps um, weathering so here we're actually trying to make that stone look imperfect and like it's been under weather for a long time so this is a lot of water and brown paint and just run it over the stone run it through crevices run it through all the pieces you know think of how dirt would flow there um, get some green too green with water at the base of the pillars it's usually where you get mold you know water pulls from rain um, it collects there so it kind of gets um, really green uh, also the fact that it rains on these pillars um, it's quite um, it makes them quite green usually from the top so um, yeah but here uh, here is the, the pillar that I that didn't stick so here I just I got fed up I just took a toothpick made a hole in it and just put it through the board um, I don't recommend doing this especially with a sharp toothpick like mine because you know if you run with this piece and you fall on it you're gonna get hurt uh, don't do that but um, I was just in a rush here so I just did it really quickly and I kind of covered the hole with uh, with some um, gray paint but uh, going back to weathering just put more brown put more green mix brown and green you can even put a bit of black um, yeah just see how it looks like um, see how it feels and make it your own here I actually experiment I got some red I didn't plan to use red initially but I was like hey this is a piece that you could use for an encounter you might have some you know a fight area maybe there was some blood there maybe there's some leftover blood so I kind of tried to put some red there um, it didn't stick initially but you're gonna see later on in the video I'm actually making that pillar look like something bad has happened there all right next step uh, let's apply the turf and here I just have Mod Podge mixed with water and I'm just kind of randomly uh, putting it through the board um, I like 
it to be very watery because it kind of flows and it creates random patterns. Now the goal is to get the turf on the board and then kind of get it mixed with the glue. Notice I'm not pushing the turf in, I'm just letting it sip into that glue and it's going to make it stick. For the larger turf pieces, I'm just using my hand, pushing it a bit in there and then applying a bit of glue on top. Um, you can also do rubbing alcohol on top, but for this amount of turf, I found just a few drops of glue work just perfectly. And then just keep doing it until you feel it looks nice. And remember, uh, turf is random and uh, just put it in different parts, some have more, some have less, uh, make it your own. Like I said before, I wanted one of the pillars to actually have some sort of leftover battle signs and I, I want it to look like it, it was blood on it. So what I'm doing here, I'm just taking paint on the brush and splashing it all over randomly. Um, I tried a few different shades of red. Um, first I used a Tuscan red and then I tried something called True Red. I think Tuscan red looks a bit better. Um, you can also try mixing blood with, uh, blood, oh my god, uh, <laughs> mixing paint with um, with brown um, to, to make it a bit look a bit more dirty. Uh, but yeah, just kind of make that area red in the corner there and that pillar, you know, yeah, not very suitable for work, so NSFW. All right, we're at the end of the video. Here's the final result. Um, overall, it took me about an hour to build it, um, an hour of recording time. Um, it takes a bit longer because you have to wait for paint and glue to dry, but effective work time is probably an hour. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, of course, please subscribe, please like this video. And if you feel generous, do use the links in the comments to um, buy some of the products that I used. I, um, they are supporting the channel. So thank you and see you next time.